Um, but I'm going to start here with um, sugar or molasses. So, which which should I use for KNF? For for Korean natural farming or nat natural farming, molasses. which I call KNF. Right. So at this point, you may have an idea in your head, but perhaps by the time we're done, uh, you may have. Um, You'll, you'll be full of science, I guess. So to, to start, I just, I just put this slide in here um, as a, just to make sure we're all on the same page, but pretty much everyone knows how this process happens, right? We, we harvest sugarcane in the refining process, and then it is juiced, and the byproduct of that is bagasse, right? And you can, you can do many things with bagasse. You can burn it, you can compost it, you can use it as mulch and all kinds of things. It itself has value. Um, so it's, it's not just a waste product. Um, but once you've got your sugarcane juice, you then start to dehydrate it. And that gives you what we have, raw sugar. And you, you guys call raw sugar muscovado, right? Yes. Am I correct? Yes. yes. And when I t when you taste muscovado, what's what's the taste? Sweet. 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 The taste. Sweet and but also kind of a rich flavor too, right? Not just a sweet, but a richness to it. That's because it's basically just dehydrated cane sugar. You're just taking the complete cane sugar and taking removing the water, so the water comes out. Then. We take raw sugar, the muscovado, and then we do mechanical process on it to create refined white sugar. And at that time, also the molasses is stripped out. So the difference between muscovado and white sugar is that the molasses has been removed. And then to make brown sugar, they take the refined white sugar and the molasses and they recombine that. And they recombine it at different rates of the molasses to make different colors, light, light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, which have different values in cooking. So everyone knows that, we all understood. I just put it here so that we all know because I'm going to talk about the difference between sugar and molasses. So seeing where they come from and the origin of where they start is, I believe, important. The molasses is still a sugar. It has some sweetness, but most of the white sugar is, uh, the, the sugar, majority of it's removed. So, yeah, the, there's not much sugar left in the molasses. It's, so, so what, is, what is the difference between these two vehicles? And this is, this is my best attempt to make a car in the... The wheel is light and dark. Right, the, the tires are missing, right, in, in the different cars. So which one of these cars, if they look identical, right? If I bought them, which one would cost more? Big one, big, with bigger. The one with the tires, right? There's, a, there's additional cost to buy tires. So which one, if I drove them, I got the cheaper car and I drove it, would it be better ride? Or the one with the tire would be a better ride? The tire. Okay. So, yeah, and, and if I just drove on my rims, what would happen? Crack, over here. Crack, break, and I would, I would start, sparks would fly, right? And my friends would look at me and I'd be like burning out. <laughs> sparks everywhere, just going. I could still drive though, right? Yeah. Like if I got a flat tire and I was on my rim, I still could drive a little bit. I wouldn't stop immediately, right? Friction, so much of friction. But it would be smoother if I had a tire on there, right? Yeah. Okay. So, which one of these would you buy? With the tire. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the road and you, you'd buy it with the tires, right? You wouldn't be like, oh, I want the car with just the rims because I'm going to save some money and just buy the rims, right? Like, we, we, think, we think fully through that, right? We, we understand this, you know? So, so what is raw sugar? What is the muscovado? Well, what I say is the tire is the refined sugar because that's what gives it the smoothness, right? When you taste refined white sugar, it's smooth, right? But the, the molasses are, are like the rims. 
because the rims are what gives the tire structure. You know, I cannot drive just on a tire. If I did that, it, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't fit on the car. It would fly off. All kinds of problems. The air wouldn't stay in. So the rims are very important because they give it structure. So what is the tire with the rim? And that is like your raw sugar and or your brown sugar because that has both the rims and the tire, right? And so a complete tire is, is raw sugar or brown sugar. And that's what gives it smoothness in your ride plus the longevity of your, your vehicle and all the investment you've made and that the structure that holds it all together, right? So there's many reasons to, to have it. So I was asked on the internet just recently, is, is molasses just like a cheaper tire, right? That's why this morning when you guys were doing Tai Chi, I asked what's the cheapest tire and someone told me it's balls. I like that, balls, balls. But brown sugar is a cheaper form of raw sugar, right? If you go to the store, Muscovado is very expensive, right? but the brown sugar is cheaper. So the brown sugar still is, is like the, the balls tire. It's a cheaper version of similar thing. And the raw sugar is like the Goodyear tire. It's, it's the supreme, it has the most nutritional value in it. It's the one that, you know, we, we can really afford it. We wanna eat the good sugar. We maybe splurge and get some muscovado if you're, you know, maybe it's your wife's, you know, your wedding anniversary, you cook with muscovado instead of brown sugar or your child's birthday, you're like, oh, you know, extra. And so you could go between these two, right? They're, they're pretty much the same tire of the different types of sugar, but they have different quality to them. And the rim is like the molasses. So it's not just, the molasses to sugar is not just a cheaper tire, it's actually a different structure. And we're back. Okay, so, so this, this point makes, makes sense, everyone kind of following the, the difference between the cheaper, the more expensive, and then molasses being the rims. It's actually not just a cheaper tire, but it's actually a different part. So let's, let's look at the properties of the materials that we use in natural farming and what, what's the difference between them. So I, I made this little chart here to make it kind of easy, quick comparison. So the first one is raw sugar. And then we got white sugar, molasses, salt, and brown sugar. I'm comparing all of those because all of those materials on the left side can be used for this, they all can be used for similar extraction and preservation. Then going across the top, we have very dry, full of minerals, tolerated by a broad set of microbes and price. And those are all the different conditions we wanna compare between our materials. So the first one is raw sugar, and this one, it's, it's dry, it's full of minerals, it's tolerated by a lot of microbes, but it's really expensive, right? High price. The next one coming down is white sugar, but what white sugar lacks is minerals, right? That's why eating refined white sugar decays your teeth, makes you very unhealthy, because those minerals are actually pulled out of your body to replenish that white sugar to make it back into brown sugar in your stomach. So it lacks the minerals. The next one coming down is molasses. And molasses, unlike brown or unlike sugar, it's a liquid, yeah? So it's it's very liquidy. Then next one coming down is salt. But salt is not tolerated by a broad set of microbes. And then the last one there is brown sugar and this one has all the properties we're looking for and it has just you know a little higher price than molasses not, not too much more so i'm going to go through those different things on the top column so why do we need a dry material and is you know is molasses liquid or solid liquid. is sugar liquid or solid solid so which one has more moisture so in my picture there, I drew, I had the black dot, which represents the darkness of molasses, but there's also water in it. That's why it has a water droplet. Then the bottom one is the brown sugar or the raw sugar, and it's just there by itself, but there's no water droplet because it's a solid. It turns into a crystal, right, when it's stored properly. So there's no water in there. 
So again, why is a dry material needed? So there's two reasons, and I'll go through these to explain them in a bit, bit more, but the first reason is that dry material, because it's dry, it's able to exert osmotic pressure and pull the good stuff out, whereas, um, and the junk stays in the cell. The second reason is you can use sugar to do preservation. When we made jams and jellies, we put in um, sugar, and then the you know your your fruit that you're making your jelly from doesn't rot, right? It then becomes shelf stable, and you can store it. And so it's used as a preservation, which extends your shelf life much longer, one to three years. You know, you can store jam for many years, even when you buy um, you know canned fruit. It's always in that sugary brine, right? because that sugar helps preserve the fruit. Otherwise, it would decompose and rot. But they're using sugar as a preservation technique. So a little bit about osmosis, um, just to kind of share with you, um, is there's, there's basically two ways to get something out of a cell, you know, out of, out of a, something. And the first is mechanical, right? I can take something and I can crush it or I can cut it and then juice leaks out, right? And so this one, this one on this side here, you can see um, the stuff that the stuff's in the cell, and this the bluer color one represents the water I want to get out, and this black one is representing the junk in there, and this is a plant cell. And so if I cut it with a knife and I make this incision, then this stuff, both the junk and the and the good stuff, leaks out, right? It just comes out of the cell. But there's another way to get things out of the cell without breaking the cell wall, without cutting it. That's what we call osmotic pressure. But now that I've zoomed in, can you see the plus and the minus signs? Yeah. The junk has a negative sign and the plus has a positive sign. So those are, those are plus and minuses in attraction. And then if you look at the next one down, right here, you'll see that this has sugar. And the sugar also has a negative sign. So what happens here is when you mix sugar against the cell wall and you get sugar to coat against it, it starts to create negative pressure on the outside. And what's holding this water in the cell is this negative and this positive. The junk and the water are staying in because they're balanced, negative and positive. But if you can put enough sugar on the outside to get more negatives on the outside, then what happens is that it overcomes the negative power of this junk holding it in, and this negative power, power pulls the water out through the cell wall. And it goes through a permeable membrane onto the outside. So without breaking it, because you created so much like magnetic energy, you can think of it that way, like a magnet, it actually pulls it through without breaking the cell wall. So what happens when you do this, instead of cutting it, is actually your junk stays in the cell, but the good water comes out of the cell. So you've done something even different than mechanically crushing it. You've actually pulled it through without damaging anything. And this is just chemistry and how, how God created our universe with all this magic that he's put in there for us to learn about and scientifically figure out. We are blessed that he's done that for us. But you're, you're talking about the plant cell? Yes, yes. Also animal cell? Yes, any, any meat, like, like any, any living cell will have this property. So the second concept that I was talking about with the sugar is this other concept called supersaturation. And this is used in preservation. So the first one is used in extraction. The second one is used in preservation to preserve things. And so what happens in supersaturation is every water molecule is chemically bound with a sugar molecule. So that means like through chemistry, they are, they are linking together with each other and they're linked. And so if you look at my top thing here, what I'm trying to represent is the water droplet is water. This thing here is a microorganism. Actually, I think it's a squid, but or octopus, but, but it's supposed to represent a microorganism. 
then this here is representing molasses. Remember, the molasses has the water attached to it because it's wet, it's liquid. And then this here is representing the sugar molecule again. So what happens is if I pour a solution off from in natural farming and I get a solution that's done, it has a fair amount of water in it. So you can see in this picture here, this is the solution that's done, and there's a lot of water in there. There's also some microbes in there. And with a lot of water, what happens is the microbes still remain very active. See the guy running? He's supposed to represent a lot of activity, right? So with a lot of water, if you drink enough water, you can be active. If you're denied water, you want to just sit down, rest. You don't want to be too active, right? So a lot of water, activity. If I take that same solution here and I pour molasses into it to store it, because the molasses already has water attached to it, do you see that these water molecules are still free? There's still water molecules that have nothing attached to them. And so what that means is those water molecules are still available for the biology to eat, and then because they're eating water, they still remain very active. And they're still like, yeah, we, you know, and you actually added food, because molasses is a food, and so they get even more active. But this third one down here, notice every single water molecule has a sugar attached to it. What happens when every water molecule has a sugar attached to it is the microbes go to sleep. They become very sleepy. It's just like if you drank a super sugary drink, you would get so thirsty, you would have to drink more water. But if there's no water available, you would just be like, oh, and just take a nap. And that's basically what happens with the microorganisms. When you put in the sugar, enough of it, every water molecule be, gets chemically tied up with a sugar molecule and they have nothing to drink. So what happens is life slows down significantly. And what we call this is arresting fermentation. And it's just like, you know, you're put under arrest and you can't go anywhere. You're like, oh, you know, you could still walk around a little bit, but if you walk too far, you'll get shot and all kinds of stuff. So this is called arresting fermentation. And what happens is decomposition almost stops. So my solution no longer is being eaten by the microbes because they're all under arrest. They're all sleeping, they're all tired. They can no longer degrade my material. This is why using sugar for preservation works through super saturation. And if you notice on this picture too, there's one other thing. You see all these sugar molecules at the bottom? They've sunk to the bottom and there's no water attached to them. That's because I've kind of oversaturated. I've gone beyond that a little bit. And if I get just a little ring of sugar on the bottom, that means that all of the water has been attached to a, a sugar molecule. So it's all attached when I, and I have a little excess float to the bottom, that's fine. If you have a lot excess on the bottom, you put too much, but just a little extra at the bottom without any water on it, that's fine. So we talked about dryness. The next one is why are the minerals important? So I, I put this in here, I, I actually added this first bullet point here while Ray was talking because he said, don't eat sugar. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I wanted to be like, bro, don't say that. But refined white sugar has no minerals. Did you? Okay, I, I, I didn't hear that. So, because sometimes people just say sugar, 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 and it all gets confused, but it's really about refined white sugar has no minerals. That's why it's bad. It steals those minerals from your body. And we're already deficient in minerals. It's, our food has less and less of it, so if we eat that sugar, it steals even more from us. But raw sugar, the muscovado, is actually not bad for you. It's actually a health food, and so is cane juice. You can drink just fresh cane juice, and it's actually medicinal. And you'll find ancient cultures drank or ate sugar cane to actually clean their teeth. So eating raw sugar cane makes your teeth stronger because the raw sugar cane has the minerals in it, and your teeth are made of minerals. 
So when you're eating more minerals, you're strengthening your teeth by eating muscovado or cane juice. And so it's actually good for you. So the minerals provide the, the strongness. Think, think of, you know, like think of rocks. They're really hard. That's what gives it the strength. And good bodies, you can't build a good, a good human being without the right minerals. Right? If I'm mineral deficient, I'm going to be weak in some way. I'm going to have some sort of health problem hit me pretty soon, right? If I don't have enough minerals. So the same thing, why we want enough minerals in our, in our solution that we're making is because during fermentation, we're going to grow millions or trillions of little bodies. They're going to break that stuff down and start eating it. So we need to make sure they have the minerals they need so they can be really strong to do the proper fermentation. So we did dryness, we did the minerals. Why is it important that we have a broad family of microbes? And this is the one that salt really lacked, right? So how many people can really eat something that's super, super salty in your family? Like if you make a dish and it's really salty, how many people in your family will say, I'll eat it? Okay, let's take that in comparison to how many people in your family would eat something that's really too sweet. So most people I know, if something's too salty, they want to add water to it or dilute it, make it less salty. But if something's too sweet, they'll just eat it anyway. Yeah. We all have sweet tooths, right? We'll just eat it. But there's a few people that don't like too sweet too, right? Yeah. But, but more, most people eat the candy, they drink the soda, everything way too sweet. And we just love that, right? Versus if you just sold a, a bottle of like salt, seawater salty, how many people would drink that? Very few, right? Most people would be like, you'd be like, wow, how do you do that? So more, it's, it's similar to us, that more of us prefer sweet to salty, and same with the microbes. The microbes actually prefer sweetness over saltiness. And so more microbes will like sweet things than salty things. So what happens is, you end up getting a broad family of microbes able to break down something sweet and only a very narrow family that are able to break down things that are salty. And that has benefits for certain processed foods. But like for instance, beef jerky, you wanna preserve meat, salted meat, you add the salt and nothing will decompose it, right? Um, but a lot of things will eat sugar. And the thing about sugar is a little bit is actually a stimulant, but too much can actually slow down the growth and, and retard the growth. And so our last, our last thing up on the, that column was our price considerations. And I went to Robinson's Market yesterday and I was glad they just had this table chart sitting there for me. I was like, awesome, I need that, snap that photo. But it gave me an idea of what sugar and the prices are here to understand. And does anyone know what um, one kilo of molasses costs? I was, I was unable to find that. Like, I know, I'm certain that molasses is cheaper because it is a waste product. So I'm certain that it is cheaper than this. But I just wanted to show that, and muscovado is even more expensive than this, okay? So sugar is more expensive, molasses is less expensive. But when you think about price, you also have to think about the long-term stability of something. If I'm gonna take a bunch of my time and energy to go make something, and then it's gonna decay in a week or two weeks, then I have to remake it, versus I can make the same thing and use a little bit more expensive product, and it's going to last for many months to a year. The cost savings is kind of a hidden factor. You think molasses is cheaper, but you always have to make it again to have the highest quality product. Versus you make it once with this more expensive product and it's done for a long time, right? It's just like buying a plastic fork versus a metal fork. You know, the plastic fork is cheaper, but you'll have to buy more of them versus you buy a metal fork and you'll have it for the rest of your life if you took care of it, right? So again, you have to think about this because really your time is money. And unlike other money where you can earn more of it, you can never earn more of your life back. Right now, this moment was gone. Ooh, gone. You can't get that back. So I hope you are investing your time 
is your most important part of your money and how you value yourself. It's time, time spent with your kids, time spent in your garden, time spent doing things you love. That, to me, is more important than anything else. I would spend more money to have more of my time, right? So when you start to think about it in a broader perspective, the cost can change based on your time and how you value yourself, you know? So again, let's go back to this chart, but this time I added another column. And so we went over these properties of why we needed it dry, why we needed minerals, why we needed a broad set to be tolerated by microbes, and also the price. So this is the chart I came up with of what fits all of those criteria in a way that makes most sense to me. And here you've got the white sugar at the top. Is it good for can No. Why not? Right, the microbes won't grow very well in our fermentation, right? They'll be sick and our fermentation won't happen good. Is molasses good? Because it's too wet, right? It won't pull the juice out of the cell and then if we add molasses at the end, it won't preserve it, right? It'll activate it and it'll continue to decay. Is salt good? Because the microbes we need to work during fermentation, they say, oh, too salty, and they quit their job. Nothing gets done. What about raw sugar? We could use it though, right? Yeah. If, if we were millionaires and we were just throwing pesos on the ground, we could, we could buy muscovado, right? And we could use it. And maybe if we were making a medicine for our best friends, someone we really care about, a family member, we may take that extra cost, yeah? What about brown sugar? Yes. Brown sugar is less expensive, it has the minerals, it has the dryness, it has everything we need, right? So brown sugar is a pretty good, pretty good case. It's not that expensive in comparison to other things. So again, I come back to this vehicle, and which one would you choose? The one with the tires? Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand now how the rims, the tires, the difference between all these fit? And which one makes the choice for us? If we want to get the most mileage, we want to go the furthest, we want to arrive safely, we want to do all these things, we choose the vehicle that works, right? The one with the tires, the one with the proper equipment, you know? I have just a question. You said salt is not good, but the demo yesterday we used the salt with the water, you know, with the potatoes. A little bit of salt. No, no, I'm not. I'm not decrying salt completely. Like, like, no, no, don't, don't mix that up with this. What I so the salt that I'm going to use is in the next recipe. A little bit of salt is the minerals, and when we use the salt, you could drink that water. It would, it's just tiny bit of salt. If if I put like mostly salt and you drank that, it would be oh, and the microbes wouldn't grow. But we only added just a tiny bit of salt, right? Yeah, a little bit of salt, good. I'm talking about, you know, a decent amount of salt. So good, good question, yeah, thank you. I'm not, I'm not saying salt completely is bad. I use salt in a lot of things. I brush my teeth with salt, all kinds of things. So, okay? Yeah. Good on this? Yeah.